Hey everybody, my name is Ingrid Blackburn and welcome. I'm so excited to be a guest on Just Dance channel. Today we're going to talk about gelatos. They are rich, super creamy pigment sticks by Faber-Castell. And I'm going to show you a couple of techniques that you can do with these cool, cool mediums to create some amazing backgrounds. Now techniques are what we're all about, right? If you haven't already signed up for Justine's Technique Resource Binder class, be sure to check out the link in the description box below. It's a very cool class. You'll learn a couple new techniques every month in depth. So to get started, we're gonna use some white gesso on some regular cardstock. This is just 80 pound Nino Solar White cardstock. You can use any cardstock. You could also use watercolor paper and you don't necessarily need to use the gesso, but I would highly recommend it. Gelatos work much better over a gessoed surface. And basically what white gesso is doing here, and you can also use uh, transparent or black as well, is it's creating a surface where the gesso, which works really well with water, uh, can actually move and glide. It's basically creating a barrier between the cardstock, which is normally an extremely porous surface, uh, and giving the actual medium some tooth and something to actually grab onto. You saw that I used a credit card in the first uh, application, and here I'm using just a paintbrush. The difference between the two is when you use some sort of a card, now I used a Starbucks card, you can also use an old hotel key, is that that gives you a really super flat surface, whereas the paintbrush gives you these really cool ridges or actual texture that it leaves behind in the gesso, kind of like an imprint. And I have to say my personal preference is actually using the paintbrush. Both looks are excellent, both looks work, but I actually love that extra little bit of texture and tooth that it gives the project. So now that we have our gessoed surface, I am going to take one that was painted with the paintbrush and it's completely dry and that is something that is very important. Like I said, you can also do this on watercolor paper, but my preference is actually the gesso surface. I feel like the gelatos, they glide a little bit better. You can see they're very creamy pigment sticks and they're kind of like a chapstick in consistency. I'm just taking several shades of green from various collections. Gelatos are uh, in different collections such as metallics or iridescence or brights or pastels and they are also sold individually at some stamp stores. I do find that the collections are a pretty good deal. And you can see here I've got various greens and I'm adding a little bit of iced coffee here to the edge. And now it's time to blend them. There's really no precision to this. That's what's really nice about gelatos. They just need a little bit of something to kind of help them move along. So I'm just using some very basic supplies, water and my finger. And if you don't wanna get your fingers dirty, you can use a rag or you can use a paper towel, you know, something to kind of help it along, but you will need the water. Without the water, it doesn't really glide. And that's really crucial. And you can see I'm just kind of blending these together and I'm not gonna be super perfect or worry about that. And that's saying a lot considering I am quite the perfectionist actually. I'm going up and down as well as across and you can kind of see that texture that the paintbrush through the gesso left behind. It's really beautiful and adds so much to the project. You can kind of see that I did stay in the middle here and, and kept from the edge. And then now we're going to just kind of use our finger to create a blended, almost like picture frame around our project. And as with anything, you always wanna be aware of the amount of water that you're adding to your project itself. Because remember, this is a regular piece of cardstock with gesso on top. It is, even watercolor paper can only absorb so much water. So you don't wanna overdo the water. You wanna just have the right amount of, the right balance, you know, the right amount to get your medium moving without washing it away. And if you do wash it away, as you can see, I'm adding a little bit here and there just to kind of brighten it up in spots where it got a little dull or maybe I washed a little too much away. But you can see it's really starting to take shape and I was really kind of going for that kind of rustic feel and I'm loving how this background turned out. So now that we've created our background, it's time to add some interest and I'm laying the stencil on top and just kind of centering it. You can see I have some painter's tape from the, coming from the back side of my project. 
And that's kind of grabbing onto my stencil so that it doesn't move. I have some gelatos just down on my craft mat and I'm just taking a makeup sponge and twisting as I'm positioning that gelato kind of through the open spaces of the stencil onto the project. Now this is just one way of adding some interest to your project. You can do it uh, this way. It's color on color. You can see it's extremely faint. So I'm going to, I actually ended up not really focusing on this particular technique, but I wanted to show it to you. Now we're going to do something called the vanishing gelato technique. And I basically took a paper towel. You can use also a rag or a baby wipe and with some water and just gently twist. And you can see that the gelato just comes right up from your project. It is worth it to note that if you didn't have the gesso surface underneath, it would not come up as easily. So to do this technique the best, I would recommend having the gesso on your uh, cardstock, your surface. And you can see here that it just basically removes that color. Now, if you don't twist your paper towel or rag, you're going to end up depositing back down some of the color on that. And that's not what you want to do. And that's why you're going to want to twist that. I don't want to remove everything, but you can see here it's leaving some very interesting uh, characteristics onto the project, kind of like a negative, kind of like a ghosting technique a little bit. So I'm going to leave that as is, and then we're going to add something very cool on top. We're going to use another stencil, and this is one of my favorites by Stamplerations. I love this stencil. You can see it's covered in <laughs> dark brown paint because I do a lot of mono printing with it. I'm basically taking some acrylic paint that you see there, that's Van Dyke Brown, and just using another makeup sponge to just kind of pounce some of that acrylic through there. You want to make sure that that stencil is secure with some tape there on the sides and what that's going to do is just leave that impression through it. Now you could do this with darker gelatos. It won't have the same impact as the acrylic paint but that's okay. I just wanted to give it this uh, really kind of rustic feel so I went for that. Doesn't that look really cool? And we have an amazing background now for a Christmas project. Now it does need one little tiny other touch. You can even do this with gelatos, but I chose to do it with the acrylic paint because I wanted a really, really dark look here. So just added a teeny spritz of water there to my paint, doing a look, tapping my brush here. Just, I don't want to overdo this, just a little bit of splatter there to the background and look at that. Is that not awesome? We created an amazing mixed media background. It wasn't very difficult. You wanna make sure to dry that before this next step, but it has such interest and character and texture to it. Now, keep in mind, you know, you don't have to do an entire background. You could cut that down and just do a little strip. You could do lots of different things, but first we wanna go ahead and seal that. So I have some matte gel and this is actually, it's actually gel medium and I'm just adding a little bit to a gel plate. This is just one of many ways of how to seal gelato should you choose to do so. You don't always have to. I just thought it would be kind of good to show you. So I'm taking a gel plate. This is a five by seven gel plate and I'm pouncing my brayer back and forth and that's basically spreading that out into a very even uh, kind of uniform surface there. And what this is gonna do is gonna create a barrier over my project so that nothing ever comes up. Gelatos can be moved with liquid and other mediums. So if you're gonna continue to do more to your project, you're gonna wanna seal it. You can also use a spray sealer if you want, a fixative, all different ways. I've used matte medium before, lots of different ways of sealing it. Just throw a piece of copy paper over that, burnish the back, and you're good to go. So here's the big reveal. So that copy paper pretty much pulled up the rest of that medium from our gel plate. And you can see it has a real fine little layer on there. Just gonna give it a quick zap with a heat tool and you're set, completely sealed. You could layer other gelatos, other mediums on top now and nothing's gonna move. Don't go anywhere because I have more projects coming. And if you really love this technique or love gelatos or just anything really about this, be sure to leave me a comment below. I would love to know what you're thinking. I think I'm gonna color several whole sheets of this and make several Christmas cards this year. So I thought that I would take a few seconds to just quickly show you another project sped up really fast because you saw me do in detail a lot of these. You can see we're doing a reddish background. This is actually on watercolor paper so there's no gesso surface underneath and I'm using some of the iridescent 
uh, gelatos along with a few others, which gives us a real shiny background. I'm using a cover plate cut out of just some regular cardstock here, and I'm using a baby wipe. Now I wanted to show you the difference of how these gelatos don't pull up as easily with watercolor paper as they do with the gesso surface underneath. That doesn't mean that it doesn't work. It definitely does work. It just has a totally different effect. And when you see the close-up picture here in a second, you will notice the difference. But look at how beautiful that is. That uh, cover plate left a very distinct impression there. It's just really subtle there in the background. And that's what's really magical. Isn't that sheen just gorgeous? gorgeous? That's some of the iridescence that got moved around from the iridescent collection. I love that collection of gelatos. And this is a really cool cover plate by Catherine Pooler. Now, I'm also gonna do something different here. I'm just gonna add some of the iced coffee to the edges. And this also gives it a real nice framing look to your projects. I do this a lot with an um, ink blending and the makeup brushes on the corners of projects because a lot of times when you frame projects, it just helps to draw the viewer into the project. Doesn't that really have a nice feel to it? I'm really digging this start to this project. And this of course is a close up of the finished project. That snowflake is crazy sparkly with some wanderlust embossing powder on it and a really cute sentiment by Penny Black. And you can really do just about anything with gelatos. I also have another project right here that I wanted to show you. You can create fun rainbow backgrounds and just, you know, I mean, I did this on a huge piece of paper and cut it up into strips to use on multiple projects. Super quick and easy with the vanishing stencil technique that you just learned. Just one of many techniques that you'll find either on my channel or many other creator channels. I'm sure you all have gelatos here somewhere in a drawer, right? There's so many things you can do with gelatos. Here's just another sample of yet using more mediums with gelatos to paint and do other fun things. Thanks so much for joining me today. Be sure to click that video on the left if you want to learn more techniques and consider subscribing to both Justine's and my channel. Thanks for allowing me to pop by your channel today, Justine. Bye, everybody.